Welcome into Sunday Sermons, and this is the where we uh, read from the book, the Tome, uh, by Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. This this edition happens to be the 2016 edition of the uh, United Independent Compensatory Code System concept book that Mr. Neely Fuller wrote. It's a compensatory uh, counter racist code. I mean, we call it the code, but you know everybody. A lot of people say the code these days, but I don't know. You know, sometimes they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, anyway, so this is the the uh, revised and expanded edition. It's a textbook workbook for thought, speech, and or action for victims of racism, which Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. insists is white supremacy. Uh, so, uh, so every Sunday we read. We, this is this is our scripture. Uh, this book. I mean, you know, I, I have. Uh, uh, well, there's the uh, original book that that's also published in, in this format, you know, and it has uh, the, the original, well, the, the design of the original cover. But then there's the original original book, the the 1984 edition, uh, the 1984 edition uh, that came out in 1984. I'm not talking about the one they they reprinted. Uh, that's a little bit bigger format than uh, well. You, Stick with Sunday services when I get to South Africa, when I get back to Dumbasa, that's what we have it there and we use it as a scripture. In fact, we'll be doing some interesting things with that there. So um, uh, uh, you can get this book back basically by uh, going to uh, the website producejustice.com. That's P-R-O-D-U-C-E-J-U-S-T-I-C-E.com, producejustice.com. Um now, usually with, with scripture, I mean, you know, you you go any place. The, see, the book the book is designed as a workbook. It's it's not designed for you to read it from cover to cover. Therefore, you know, like like I think I got my narrative. Do I have my narrative thing on. I have my narrative T shirt on right now. Uh, you know, they're they're a group of uh, I want to call them academics, but you know, people interested in the that academic world, reading books and stuff like that. And but this is not the kind of book that they they would necessarily read and discuss. Because it's a it's a textbook. You suppose actually supposed to read it like the Bible. You open it up any place and you and you read it. Now I've been perusing the book for a while now, but I, not just this book, but the original one. And I decided in this particular uh, edition, they have an in the back section that nobody talks about. I guess maybe I should call up sometime and ask about one of these things back here. They have uh, like uh, they, they call it uh, he calls it general general compensatory quotations. For thought, speech, and or action. So these are quotes from Mr. Neely Fuller Jr., I guess. Well, they're, they're quotes from him, as he said throughout the years. So um, I'm not... It starts on page, what? starts on page 403, and it goes to uh, page uh, 445, 440, 447, right? So I'm not going to read every quote, right? But 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 I but I've, I've highlighted. Oh, by the way, when you do, well, you should get the, you should you should get several copies of this book here. But one of the copies you should mark up with a highlighter if you can, you know, because you know that's the kind of thing it's supposed to be a research book, okay? And it's yours. And you could you could have one copy that's pristine someplace, and then you have your work copy that you know you're writing notes in and stuff like that. Which is what I've done. Well, I say I've done. So this week, instead of going to one of the the um, what it, it, you know, Mr. Neely Fuller Old Junior always talks about the um, nine areas of activity, of human activity. Um, and that's what the, the book is broken down in, into, right? And they are listed. Yeah, see those? Those are the nine areas. Numbered even, right? You know, you have economics, education, entertainment, right? You have a labor, law, politics. And, and had, I think he defines politics as human activity. Uh, religion, sex, and war, counter-war. Uh, on his uh, uh transmission that he does every Tuesday, he doesn't talk about the war counter war a section of the of the, uh, of the book. And of course nobody ever brought <laughs> brought up this last section here that I guess well let me see if they have it in the index. Not the index, the uh, you know the break the, the whatever. Yeah, they say yeah this is, they, they don't have a page where it says general compensatory quotations for thought speech and action at the end there. Yeah. So it's, it's listed there, no page number listed there. So I decided because I use a marker to go through this, but rather than start from the beginning, I have a certain style. Uh, not start from the beginning, I shouldn't say it like that, but rather than start, you know, from the beginning, I, let's start at page uh, 429 and then go back from there. Some of the things that I've highlighted, and, you know, we, we can talk, no, we can talk, about, I can talk at you about it if, if, if you want, okay? So here we go. 
the first the first one that popped out of my eye was a oh, by the way let me wet my whistle this is a sunday and this is sunday sermons so it's a sermon so i you know most most religious practices i know they have some sort of uh imbibing uh imbibing kind of thingy you know like wine <laughs> so why should i be any different sunday sermon a fine wine mm. Oh, this is a good one. This is called, uh, it's a red wine. It's uh, called a warden. Uh, let me see what it's made out of. And, that, and uh, it, they'll tell you what, what it's in it. They usually do, rule by the cunning, blah, 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 blah. But they don't tell you. They don't tell you what it's made out of. They just says a red wine. Hmm. It was, it's reserve. Oh, can I tell you a secret? If you get if you get a bottle of wine it says, and it says reserve on it, that's a good thing to do. That means that the, the winery says like this is a special wine. Okay, back to the point here. Sorry, I had to wet my whistle. So one of the first things I highlighted, well, one of the things I highlighted in this section is uh, the naked body of a person is generally its own attractive picture. That's in quotes. It is its own adornment. That's another quote. And needs no additions, subtractions, burns, stampings, punctures, carvings, or advertisements. Think about that. All these people that's uh, tattooing their bodies up and whatever they whatever they doing. It's an adornment. But he says, uh, he says, uh, he says he don't know about that. I don't know what he says about it. He says, well, he says the body is his own attractive thing. When I was running through the jungles of Belize one time, I got the, the, some some vegetation ripped my arm, you know, so I had like three scars on my arm for a long time. So I, I, I like scarification, but I guess that's natural scarification rather than people like, like Killmonger and making kill marks for whatever it is. Okay, now I'm bringing up some fantasy here. And uh, this book is no fantasy. So let's do that. So that, as I go to, uh, oh, on page, um, next next uh, highlighted thing that I see is on page 431, where it says, uh, do not do or say anything or decorate yourself with anything with intention of attracting attention to yourself without being willing to explain a constructive purpose for doing so. In other words, if you're going to mark your body up, then if somebody asks you a question, you got to give them the constructive answer why that's there, you know? That's, that's I guess, that's self-explanatory. Uh, the next highlighted uh, thing I came through in the, in the back of this section is on page uh, 435 where it says travel only for purposes of constructive material gains, constructive learning, uh, emergencies, and or give constructive help to others. Okay, that's generally how I travel, you know, constructively. Yeah, I, I travel constructively. Okay, I'm on it, I'm on it right now. Let's go to this next page, page uh, 437. Oh, this is an interesting one that caught my eye, and I'll tell you, tell you the reason why in a second. Schools should not be named for people. You know, like I went to William George Lloyd Garrison, a public school, PS31, up there in the Bronx, you know, on the concourse. And William Lloyd Garrison, the abolitionist or whatever, whatever he was doing, right? You know, helping out the peoples, you know. I like that. And then I went to Elijah uh, D. Clark Junior High School. I once knew who Elijah Clark was. He did something, you know, because, you know, at some particular point, I guess they said to, to give somebody, instead of giving them a medal, you know, if you're in, instead of a war medal, they would give you a, a school named after you. And then, of course, talk about medals and st stuff like that in, in military. And then, of course, I went to, not of course, but I went to Theodore Roosevelt High School. So there you go, named after another person, right? Well, Bronx Community College was just made that after the Bronx, so that's totally different. But Livingston College was named after the, the, the one of those colonizers when I went to Livingston, part of, part of Rutgers and Piscataway. But that's no longer exists. That college no longer exists. Extreme. My junior high school, they they named it. They named it. They no longer exists. That, that, that. My elementary school no longer exists. Theodore Roosevelt, it's called it's some sort of academy now, but I guess it still keeps the name Theodore Roosevelt. So that's the only one. And Bronx Community College, oh, well, it was Bronx Community College, so I guess it still exists like that. But Livingston doesn't exist anymore. Hmm. But anyway, um, schools should not be named for people, right? They should be named for their purpose. They should be named for their purpose. Interestingly enough, 
because I think uh, in the, the school system now they do say school for blah blah school for blah blah. So I guess that that would be right. And interesting enough, also I I didn't know about this these quotes or anything like that. So right before I left um, uh, to come up to the states for a bit, now I got to go back to the bonds. I have a project there, and we're building like a community. So call it a community center. Community center slash school, right? But we but it's named, you know, we, we, it's named after a purpose, not after a, per, uh, a person. So um, in fact, um, one of the books, I write in books all the time, but on the back of this book, I put down the name and the, and the, and the, and let's call it the guiding lights, the guiding forces behind uh, the, the uh, situation, um, the situation at the location I'm dealing with in Dumbaza. Right, and the 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 name of the uh, school, if you will, the community center is Acolytes of Liberation. So this school housed the Acolytes of Liberation. Now we are, we are guided by certain like we have we 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 go for, from the nutritional suggestions from Yaki, as in Yaki Awakening, I mean, Yaki Y H you know, slash or accent K I it should be Yaki, but people say Yaki. Right, guidance. By the brother, that would be me, A.J. Sloan, that's me, All right? Um, and then the, we, we use the principles of the code by Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. So those are the three influences for this, for this uh, for the acolytes of, of liberation. So the, the, the school is named, or the community center is named, and uh, we plan to, well, just like the name says, we're acolytes of liberation, we study liberation. Let's see, another page here that I highlighted. Uh, page uh, 440. Oh, we had two things on 440. Be willing to learn from anyone, including your enemies. Now, this is something that, you know, you you know, this is so interesting because, uh, you know, you have especially a lot of a lot of people, a lot of, uh, this is not derogatory, but a lot of Negroes, like, they, they, they are on team so-and-so, and they don't move from that team. They don't study anything else. Now, like when I was, well, I was, I still am dealing with liberation. I'm acolyte, after all, I'm starting acolytes of liberation. But back in the day, in the 60s, if you will, uh, you know, we would read everything. We read Ramparts at the same time, read New Republic, we read all sides of the thing. This day, you people, they, they just listen to one TV or radio or a couple of radio things on that sort of stuff, and they ignore the other thing. They don't hear what anybody else is saying. It's kind of strange to me because you can learn. I look, I, I survey the land. <laughs> and a lot of times I do stuff uh, because of the situation, not because of the personality, right? Okay, anyway. Um, uh, then the next thing, next quote on this page 440 is, uh, uh, the female who loses or rejects her femininity and the male who loses or rejects his masculinity will lose the best value of whatever he or she gains. Let's repeat that. I'll let this wash over you, wash through you. Ready? The female who loses or rejects her femininity and the male who loses or rejects his masculinity will lose the best value of whatever else he or she gains. So you lose your feminist femininity. Will you get? Well, you 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 heard what it said, so you can figure that out for yourself. Um, still on this, we won't, we won't be long. On, well, maybe we'll be long. I guess I see it. here on these two pages. I got four things. Uh, page four forty two. He says a thug is a person who intentionally mistreats people. Therefore, a thug should be welcome no place except. Jail or the grave? Uh oh, it's getting serious here. Since it is the duty of every person to reveal the identity of those who practice thuggery, it is therefore absolutely impossible uh, to so called snitch about the acts of a thug. Now, I know Miss Neely Fuller Jr. is talking about uh, individuals here and whatever have you, but. I have another notion, as as they would say in academia, right? The United States is a thug country. They've been thugging it since they got here. 
We're in the belly of the thugger. Of course, a lot of people act like they're thugs. A lot of Americans act like overseas or whatever. They act like they're thugs because they come from a thug society, a thug, a thug nation. So I guess the stuff, you know, you, we can't be snitching. If I say something about the United States, I can't be snitching. I say it's true. They thugs, you see? And, and the United States should be welcome no place on the planet except for in jail. <laughs> should be locked up. Or the United States should be no law. Well, the United States need to be, well, America needs to be America. That's like whatever, 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 whatever. So think about that. I mean, not what I said, but just think about that whole thing about being a thug. Uh, next quote uh, or next observation, next something. Don't fight unnecessary battles. Don't oppose non-existent opposition. Don't oppose non-existent opposition. That's an interesting one because we waste a lot of our time, which is our economy, you know, fighting unnecessary battles, reacting. Everything is reaction. You react to the thuggery that we have here. Okay, page uh, 443, uh, two highlighted things. At the end of each person's existence, the question should be, how many problems did this person make, comma, and how many problems did this person solve? I like that one. Uh, the next quote on this, uh, on this page, on page uh, 443, build or choose a place of residence that is small, comfortable, uncluttered and easy to maintain for purposes of eating, sleeping, and studying. Oh, that's what I have in Tambaza. Not so much. It's interesting because you're, you're here in the, in the belly of the thuggery and you want to act like a thug and the thug grabs things and stuff like that. And so a lot of people, they accumulate a lot of things that's, uh, well, may may not be necessary. I, I got to drink this because I got I see a little, a little uh, insecty running around here. I wanted to drink it before I do. Right? Wouldn't it be interesting if you, if if, if every in every uh, uh, Sunday sermon, the preacher be up there for real, or right? everybody would be there with sipping their wine? Now, let me tell you something. When I was <laughs> in Limpete, it's so funny because on Sunday mornings or Sunday, you find the women and they drag the young children in church, and you find the dudes in circles around trees or whatever, sharing some beer, you know, drinking some libations. Just saying. Uh, uh, for other purpose, for other pur for other possessions, learn to appreciate the free beauty of the great outdoors, the sun, the sky, the trees, the clouds, the grass, the fields, the hills, the waters. Well, I don't know, Miss Nelly Fuller Julia. You know, when you got white supremacy, just sort of like. Uh, doing these things bad, then I don't know how much we can appreciate them. I guess we got to get a system of justice. On page 444, I have two highlighted things. Religious people are religious people, and the creator is the creator. And they do not necessarily have the same goals. I'm going to leave that one alone. Uh, next one. Always expect most people to not agree with many of your opinions. Well, 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 that speaks for itself. Uh, page 445. The use of sexual scandal is one of the basic ways that white supremacists, racists, try to confuse the efforts of their opponents. This is really interesting because, you know, when I, yeah, when I was in the Air Force, I served in the Air Force from 70 to 74, but in the military, it was kind of strange because a lot, some of the orientation, I sort of remember, they, they hopped on this, like, not telling secrets, but they hopped on like sexuality, whatever it is. And I guess um, for for forever and ever, people have used uh, sexual proclivities and sexual mores to, uh, to well, they weaponize it against their enemies. I guess that's what he's talking about here. Okay. Uh, last one on this page. Be aware of requests for decorum being used to hide hypocrisy and tyranny. Hmm. Don't confuse 
decorum with justice. Everybody just calm down, calm down, have a little decorum here, you know. Then you get, no, don't confuse that. This is a good one, I like this one. Be aware of requests for decorum being used to hide his hypocrisy and tyranny. That's a good one. I like that one. Oh, and the last, the last thing that I highlighted, um, breezing through this, on page 446. Remember this, uh, ends on 447. Without discussing the system of white supremacy, there is no logical reason for discussing the so-called blackness of black people or the whiteness of white people. Without discussing the system of white supremacy, there is no logical reason for discussing the so-called blackness of black people, the whiteness of white people. Of course, you know, Miss Neely Fuller Jr. breaks down things into three, three distinctions, if you will. Uh, one would be uh, uh, non-white people, just like most people. Then you have the uh, oh, white people. <laughs> then you have white supremacists. See, white people don't necessarily have to be white, but they're always suspected of being white supremacists because they can always go back and forth, you know what I mean? So if you if you white or you have aspirations of being white, then you, you can also be a, a perpetrator of the system of uh, racist white supremacy. So that's it for this week's uh, Sunday Sermon. We do something different, uh, something in a book that I don't ever hear discussed on a, on a radio program or the, or, the, or the transmission that happens every Tuesday from uh, I think, well, Eastern Town from 9 to 11, I think it is, something like that. But check it out from ProduceJustice.com. They, they have back, back things. And it's always a joy to listen to Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. I'm saying, uh, well, because this is a joy to me, me being T from the Pattersons, taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect. <laughs>